Hello, church family. I hope that uh, this update uh, finds you well and encouraged. Uh, I'm coming back to you again from my study in, upstairs in our home here. We remain encouraged, though we miss every one of you. I wanted to take a few minutes again to point out to you that this is Holy Week. It's Holy Week, the week leading up to Easter Sunday. Uh, I hope you've been reading along uh, in your Bibles from the Gospel accounts as we get closer to Good Friday. If not, it's not too late to catch up. There's various guides that you can find, uh, like in a study Bible or online, uh, such as at, at the Gospel Coalition, and they'll point you to various texts that you can be reading through with your family. I think it makes for a better experience when we've been throughout the week reflecting on the Gospel accounts of this Passion Week as we get closer to Good Friday and then also to the Lord's Resurrection on Sunday. Uh, allow me to just point out a couple of things. First of all, I want to talk to you a little bit about the giving. I mentioned on Sunday, without going into great details, where we were at. I didn't go into detail because on Sundays now we're starting to have people plug in that are not part of our congregation and maybe it seemed like we're just going too much into that. I want to let you know a few things. I mentioned to you on Sunday that we were ahead in the months of January and February, so that was good. And then when we came into March, of course the first few weeks of March got a little scary as we didn't know what was going to happen. But as it all turned out, by God's grace, in part due to the fact that, that March has five Sundays, we ended up ahead at the end of March year to date. Uh, and particularly for the month of March, we were budgeted for 104,000, uh, rounding that off, and we received 107,000. So praise God, despite the confusion, despite the pressure that's on all of us, uh, by God's grace, uh, we have managed to show our love for this ministry and what God's doing, and this allows us to continue to support our missionaries, and especially those that are experiencing greater need now, and also supporting the work here at home. And like I mentioned on Sunday, this is probably not the end of the tale. Uh, we know that that was just the first blow, and we, we really believe that in the next few months, uh, we are going to see the economy suffering and people losing their jobs more than we've heard already. We want to be in a good position to be able to, uh, to support and meet the needs and help those people who are uh, feeling this the most. Now, our benevolent fund has remained strong. We received a good offering in the month of March as well. And as a result, we've been able to give out some support. Uh, I think we're in the 40 range, uh, 40,000 range or so. And so we praise the Lord for that. We know and believe that He's going to make that possible to meet the needs of people. So praise the Lord and thank you uh, for your sacrifice and for your love. Uh, the Lord is using that and using you. I want to let you know that uh, at this point, the majority of our community groups are meeting on some online forum now. And, and here is something that's happened as a result of it. This has created the opportunity for some of our folks who have all along been homebound now for some time to actually now plug into a community group because we never had any virtual community groups. But now they're all that way. And so what's happened is here and there, people are getting connected to community groups that never did before. So what's that going to do when this is all done? I don't know. Maybe we're going to have to keep one virtual community group going so that people that, that can't be a part of one physically can be blessed. So praise the Lord for that. That's another benefit from that. Let's talk a little bit about Sunday's streaming experience. Um, we had about 352 uh, independent connections to our website streaming. Uh, and we also had 40 connections via Facebook and 90 uh, via YouTube. So that's a lot. Now, some of those on Facebook and YouTube could have been people that started at the website and then had a problem here or there and so decided to switch over. I know that was the case with some of you. You let us know that that worked well for you. Uh, again, we hope it's working well for you. We think probably YouTube has the least problems with, with streaming, uh, but nevertheless, there's benefits to going to our website and so forth. So we want to just point that out to you. If you 
if you stream on Facebook, one of the benefits is you can you can do that as uh, a group. You can host a what they call a watch party and have several of you watching it together. Uh, YouTube has this feature where you can have people sort of saying hello to each other, you know, and chatting as they're watching. And so we we noted that that was happening with some of you. This last Sunday we had people from as far as way as Canada, Colombia, Michigan, uh, Texas. Costa Rica, South Carolina, Mexico, all connecting via one medium or another. And I had some people send me texts afterwards from some of those faraway places, and they were grateful for the ministry. And so keep praying for that. And that leads me to this Good Friday and Easter outreach. Uh, as you know, obviously, we can't uh, be in touch with people physically here and inviting them with our hand invitations by way of hand. Of course, we could mail those to people if we wanted to, but we've encouraged you to reach out to people digitally or via phone or email any way you can and invite them. You know, if they don't have a church or their church is not in a position where they were able to stream and do things like we're doing, then this way they can plug in and connect and receive the word. Uh, we're also hoping that you may invite folks that um, are not believers yet. And again, their hearts may be more, more open now due to the crisis in our society and uh, some of what they're feeling. Uh, this uncertainty in their hearts may be open now and God may use it to, to reach them. And so simply, you can do some things that I think uh, Pastor Scott Denny sent an email and giving you various ideas. One of the ideas is you, if you're on Facebook, you can give a brief video testimony of how Jesus is your hope and invite them to, 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 to come and plug in on Sunday or Good Friday. Or you have other means there as well. You just simply point them to our streaming site at our website. Again, that you'll find that uh, in that email that Scott Denny sent out. And we'll also be uh, reminding you of that before this week is over. And once they get to that home page there, when they get to that welcome page, uh, which will look a little different this time to welcome newcomers, they'll have an option there of where they want to stream, be it Facebook, be it YouTube, or via, via our direct streaming service there at our website. So again, I'm encouraging you to pray and I'm encouraging you to, to reach out in that way as we get closer to Good Friday. We will be keeping in mind the fact that we believe unbelievers will be tuning in somewhat on Good Friday, but especially on Easter uh, morning. I do want to let you know that while we're going to uh, record the Good Friday service all in, 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 one, in one stream as you were, as it were, we're not going to be live streaming on Friday, in part because we want to give a break to Ben and Michael and myself and others who are serving so that we can be with our families on Good Friday evening. So on Good Friday, you'll have the recording below been previously recorded a little earlier uh, than the evening. And that way we can all share with our families. Um, let me say that uh, about Sundays now, you know, we finished Psalm 27. And I hope that that psalm uh, was an encouragement to all of you in some way. It was repetition from two years ago, but the Word of God never grows old. It's rich and deep and powerful. Uh, my last point, uh, the last component of David's strategy, you might remember, was waiting. And I just want to reiterate a couple things and then piggyback on that. One of the things I said was that waiting time is not wasted time because God works in us while we wait. Uh, and quoting from Paul Tripp, I mentioned that waiting is not about what we get at the end of the wait. That is, it's not all about what we think we're waiting for. We may or may not get that. Uh, waiting is about what we're becoming as we wait. Uh, God is at work in our hearts and in our lives as we wait upon Him and learn to lean into Him and trust His timing, trust His plan. As we wait, God also does other things. When He does the things like this in our lives, He magnifies His own glory, His own sufficiency for us, through us, as we wait. Now, I want to piggyback on that whole point with two last points, and that is, as we wait on God, one of the other things that happens is that we deepen or grow in our desire for the eternal, the new heavens, the new earth, the new creation, uh, because we are letting go sometimes of these cheap substitutes rather than the reality that lies ahead. Uh, secondly, 
waiting is rewarded by God in that new creation. Again, as we let the, the cheap substitutes pass us by and we deepen in our investment in, uh, through our lives in the life to come. You might remember that when we went over this a couple of years ago, one of the things we did is uh, I quoted from Pilgrim's Progress, you know, one of my favorite books, and I hope some of you have Pilgrim's Progress. There's various uh, editions of it. Uh, this is one of my favorite uh, that I have all these years. This was uh, printed in the 1890s. Uh, I bought this uh, some years ago in a bookstore in Indiana when I was visiting with the Mikulskis out there. It has wonderful artwork here. You can maybe take a look at that. Um, a lot of etchings throughout the book. So I want to read from a scene in this, in this book that I read when we went over this back in 2018. You may remember one of the scenes in Pilgrim's Progress is when Christian, uh, the, the main character in Pilgrim's Progress, uh, an individual who's on his way to the celestial city and learning about the Christian life and the gospel, comes into a place called the Interpreter's House. And there are several things, several scenes that happen in the Interpreter's House. And one of them is this scene. I'd like to reread it again for you. The, vir the virtue of patience contrasted with passion. John Bunyan, the author, says, I saw in my dream that Interpreter again took Christian by the hand and led him into a very small room in which there sat two little children, each one in his chair. The elder or the older was Passion and the name of the other, Patience. Passion seemed to be very discontented while Patience remained calm and quiet. Parents, don't look at your kids as I'm reading this. Then Christian asked, What is the reason for passion's unrest? Interpreter replied, The governor or caretaker of these children would have them wait for the best things that are to be bestowed at the beginning of next year. But he, that is uh, passion, he wants to have his inheritance now, while patience is quite willing to wait. Well, then I saw a person come to Passion and bring him a bag of treasure that was immediately poured out at his feet. At this, the older, that is, the older child, Passion, rejoiced and at the same time scornfully laughed at Patience. However, I noticed that very soon Passion's wealth wasted away, with the result that he found himself left with nothing but rags. Then Christian asked the question, he says, explain this matter to me more fully. Interpreter answers, and he says, these two lads are figures, let's say they're portrayals of the men, of the people of this world. Now, patience represents those people who are prepared to wait for that which is to come. On the other hand, you'll notice that passion must have all of his inheritance now, this very year, that is to say, in this present world, or we would say this age. So are the men of this world. They insist on having all their good things now and cannot possibly wait till next year, that is to say, in the world to come, for lasting treasure. That proverb, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush, is of more authority with them than all of the divine testimonies of the good things promised in the world to come. But as you saw, passion quickly wasted away all that he had so that he ended up having nothing but rags. And so it will be with all people at the end of this age, with people like passion. Then Christian says, now I see that patience, we would say, those who wait, has superior wisdom, and that for several reasons. One, because he is willing to wait for the best things, and also because the glory of his inheritance will last when that of passion has long ago been reduced to rags. At this, interpreter says, yes, 
you may add yet another reason as well. It is that the glory of the next world will never wear out while the good things of the present decay and then suddenly are gone. I know that uh, for some of us, some of the things of this life have suddenly been gone. And for some of your neighbors as well, uh, the things that we thought we may have had uh, have dissipated. It may be wealth, it may be retirement, it may be jobs, what have you. When this happens, we need to remember that what God is doing in our life at times is lifting our eyes up and showing us the etherealness of the things that we've been placing our hope in and reorient our outlook to that which is permanent and lasting and that which is part of the new heavens and the new earth, the new creation to come. I hope that in all of this, that's one of the things that God is doing in your life and showing you the value of waiting and lifting our eyes up to the new heavens and the new earth where the things that we will experience, as C.S. Lewis once said in one of his books, become more real than what is real now, heavier than things are now because the things that are coming are not ethereal. They are permanent, everlasting. Uh, may God encourage you during this time where we're all waiting waiting for God's answer for the tension that we're experiencing, waiting for what lies ahead. And if you've lost it, things of this life, or if you will lose things that belong to this world, remember to lift your eyes to that which is lasting. God is building a glory, a glory for you, in you, and through you, and through your testimony that is everlasting. Beloved, as to uh, our time now, um, I'm done. I want to ask you to keep praying for the church and ask for our household. I do want to share with you that uh, my mother has come down with shingles uh, during this time. Obviously not a good time for her to be sick, a, a, a time like this at her age and also uh, with the shelter in place and then with my father with Alzheimer's. So pray for them. Uh, Sherry and I are blessed to be those who can care for those who cared for us when we were younger. And so I hope you are also encouraged in the things that God is doing, even the things that are hard for us. May God richly bless you. Be praying for Good Friday. See you Good Friday and Easter Sunday.